everyone. Thanks for joining our demo today. Uh, we'll go through step-by-step -step how to set up access for your organization and make use of all the different security features to keep your company data safe in the cloud. My name is Sandy, and I'm the product marketer um, for Elastin Access. If with, me, with me today is Jonathan. Hi, folks. I'm Jonathan, a product manager on Elastin Access. And we're very excited to have you join us. Whether you're just starting to plan your organization or in the process of setting up access now, we'll go through step-by-step -step what you need to be successful. In this demo, you hear an overview of what access offers. When, then we'll go into each feature and how to set it up for your organization. There are also several resources on the side that you can refer to at a later point as well. And with that said, let's jump right in. At the very core of it, Elastin Access provides enhanced security and governance for Elastin Cloud products across your organization. And this can come to life in multiple ways, such as enforcing single sign-on or two-step verification, automating user provisioning and deprovisioning, applying different authentication policies, getting insight into organization activity, and more. We'll explain what each of these features are and how to set it up for your organization. But before we do that, I do want to highlight that Access is a one license. It's one license across all of your Elastian Cloud products. It applies to your organization based on unique users, regardless of how many Elastian Cloud products that user has access to. Now on to the good stuff. The first thing we'll cover is domain verification, and it stems off of what we call an Elastian organization. An Elastian organization gives org admins the ability to see all of their cloud sites and users in one place. To be able to do this, we have a process called a domain claim where org admins can verify their ownership of the domain. In this particular example, the organization is Acme Global and the domain is acme.com. Once the domain is verified, um, Acme's organization admins can manage every Elastian cloud users with an at Acme email address. You can also claim multiple domains for your organization. And this is free. This is not something you need access to be able to do. And with that, I'll hand it off to Jonathan to show you what that process looks like. Welcome to admin.elastian.com, your central hub for all things admin in Atlassian Cloud. Not all admin features require Atlassian access, but all Atlassian access features can be found here in the admin interface. Now we're going to walk through the process of verifying and claiming a domain. This isn't a paid access feature. Uh, claiming a domain unlocks the ability to manage accounts as an admin by verifying their ownership. Uh, however, it is necessary to claim a domain in order to take advantage of most access features. As you can see up here in the nav, I'm going to go to directory and then um, to domains. So here you can see I already have a domain uh, claimed over here. This is the interface from which you can claim a domain for the first time or claim additional domains. We offer two methods, as you can see, uh, and also sort of a third. Uh, there's DNS through a text record uh, where you go to your DNS host and add uh, this simple string to your text record. That can take up to 72 hours to update depending on your DNS host. So it might not happen right away. Uh, and this is the domain verification method we recommend. There's also HTTPS from which you download this file and you host this at the root of your domain. Uh, for both of these, we will have a verification job running continuously uh, to verify that you continue to own the domain. If at any point the text record changes, or the file is moved away from the root of your server, uh, our verification job will fail and your domain status will go down to unverified. Uh, this will cause you to lose the ability to manage your accounts. At that point, we will send you an email warning you that that is the case and you have some time to go in and fix that. So I'm now going to go through the process of claiming an additional domain. Uh, prior to doing this demo, I went ahead and added uh, a text record to my DNS host in root 53. That way, I've given it the time to propagate um, so that this claim will go through. So I'm going to add my domain here and verify. Now, when you go through the verification process, the first step is verification. At this point, your domain is already verified, but you haven't gone through with the claim. 
So when verifying this domain, I discovered that there are 26 Alassian accounts on this domain that are part of my organization. We give you this screen so you have the opportunity to export the list of affected accounts, and you can th then undertake any change management actions to alert your users uh, to the coming change. Now, if you're ready to move forward, you can then click Claim Accounts. And now these 26 accounts will convert to managed accounts uh, you now have the right to apply security policies, um, view them in the audit log, change their user details, and other associated access features. To add accounts, you may need to add users one by one through using the site invite flow that you're familiar with. But with Lasting Access, you can actually automate that process. Uh, I'll hand off to Sandy to talk a little bit about that. As Jonathan mentioned, instead of spending hours a week manually adding and editing user permissions and access to each product, simply connect an identity, identity provider and assign product access based on groups to automate provisioning and deprovisioning. Think about how marketing may need access to Confluence and Jira, and the engineering team may need access to Confluence, Jira, and Bitbucket. By automating user provisioning and deprovisioning, you can feel confident that whenever someone joins or leaves that specific team, their Elastic Cloud access is always up to date with your organization's identity provider. So you don't have to add and remove access per product per user. Okta, Azure AD, OneLogin are all supported via the SKIM protocol. Google Suite or Google Workspace um, also support user provisioning. For those of you who have custom directories, we've got you covered with APIs to build your own connector which each identity provider will have slightly different steps, but Jonathan will walk us through the setup with Okta. We have thorough documentation for each identity provider. Here in the directory tab, you can find G Suite, which is syncing from Google Workspace, and user provisioning, which refers to synchronizing users through the SKIM protocol. So today we're gonna to walk through how to set up automatic user provisioning through Okta to simplify your user management. You can, of course, use other identity providers like Azure, uh, Google, or one login, uh, but today we're just going to walk through Okta. So I'm going to go here to user provisioning. It's going to be as simple as creating a directory, which I'm going to very creatively name Okta users, and copying the, corrector, the directory credentials over to Okta. So I'm going to copy these uh, somewhere where you can't see them, because as we tell you, it's not going to be visible again once you close the page. Uh, so copy them for safekeeping. Now I'm going to go to Okta, where I have added uh, Atlassian Cloud in the applications. Here in provisioning, I can configure uh, the API integration. So first, obviously, I will need to enable it. And then I can copy over my credentials from our directory. So there's the URL, oops, and there is the API key. So quick test here, successful, and I'm going to save. Now, as you can see, Okta lets you turn off and on various features of the integration, but what will happen is as you create users in Okta uh, or update them, like editing their name or their email, or deactivating them, uh, those will all get synchronized over to Atlassian. So you can manage all of your users across multiple cloud products in one place. So I'm going to enable everything, of course. Now, here in push groups, I'm going to need to assign some groups I want to send to Atlassian. So for example, let's find engineering. And that should have pushed right on over. Now, uh, this the time that users take to sync from an identity provider varies a great deal. Uh, for an IDP like Okta, it can be reasonably fast. For others like Azure, it's on a fixed synchronization cycle after a set amount of time. So they will not show up right away, uh, but don't panic. Just wait for 40 minutes in the case of Azure, and you should be good to go. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to just 
go to the groups here and assign some more groups. So engineering should be assigned its application. And while we're here, let's also add leadership to Elastian Cloud. I will also, of course, have to add leadership to the group push for it to actually synchronize. So now we should have these groups synchronizing over. And if I refresh, there's our synced uh, groups with their users. In the log here, you will be able to see if anything pops up, but as you can see, no problems. And if I want to create a new user, it should synchronize over reasonably quickly as well. So if I go to uh, Okta here and I go to people, so this leadership group here, it looks awfully lonely. Uh, ben Cisco is here all alone, and I think that he deserves some company. So I'm going to add a person. Uh, Now remember, uh, the users that synchronize over will be the ones that are on your claim domains. So if you have a user in Okta that's not on a claim domain, it will not be synchronized over to Atlassian Access. The domain claim is a pretty key feature here. So I'm gonna add Jean-Luc here uh, to leadership and save. So now with any luck, the next sync will be comparably fast. Uh, so if I go into Atlassian Cloud, and push groups, leadership is actually pushing right away again. So let's give that just a minute here. In Admin Hub, uh, if you're looking for managed users, uh, just while we wait, if you go and look at any of these users that happen to be managed accounts uh, that came through an IDP, this one isn't, but if they are synchronized, you will see a banner at the top that they are managed through an identity provider. And so you can't edit any of their details here. That'll all be centralized back into Okta. Okay, so the secret's done. Uh, let's try refreshing here. Ah, so uh, we actually ran into a hash conflict because uh, Jean-Luc Picard must already exist somewhere, uh, but I'm just gonna override that. So that'll sync in the background, but as you can see, I created a user over here in Okta uh, and synchronized it over to Atlassian Cloud. When you do have an existing user like that, if you opt into it, uh, the synchronized user from your IDP will just take over the local account and then all future changes will come from your IDP. So another great feature of connecting your identity provider is to enforce employee logins with single sign-on. Not only will single sign-on help secure your company's data, it is also a very seamless and easy way for users to log into the Alassian Cloud. We partnered with the largest identity providers to support SAML single sign-on, including Okta, Azure AD, ADFS, and Google. We also offer API support to build your own integration. Jonathan will now walk us through how single sign-on is set up with Okta. Similarly to user provisioning, setting up SAML single sign-on involves generating tokens and copying them back and forth between your identity provider and Atlassian, albeit with a couple additional steps. So Skim and SAML work great on their own, but even better together. You can provision users from an IDP into your Atlassian organization and then hand off single sign-on to the same identity provider. So you centralize all your user creation, login, security 
in one place. Uh, if your users are using Google Workspace, you can also use Atlassian Access to enforce login with Google uh, through our G Suite feature over here as an SSO option instead of SAML. For today, we're going to show setting up SAML through Okta like we did with Skim. So I'm going to go to security and then to SAML single sign-on. I'm going to click here, add SAML configuration. Now I'm going to need to go to Okta to generate some credentials. So now here we are in Okta and I'm going to go to applications, Atlassian Cloud, and then sign on. So as you can see right now, it's just web authentication, but conveniently I can go edit that, switch to SAML 2.0 and click view setup instructions. So all these steps you can follow in the documentation, but what I'm interested in here is these populated fields, the entity ID, uh, SSO URL, and the public certificate. So I'm going to copy these over into my Atlassian Cloud interface. So now you can see I'm back in admin and I'm going to copy each of those fields over. There's the entity ID. There's the SSO URL, and there's the public certificate. I'm going to hit Save Configuration here. And we let you know right away, there's another step involved, unfortunately. So you don't get to just start using SAML right after you save those. After you've saved your IDP credentials, we generate an additional set of credentials here that you are going to need to copy back into Okta. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these and switch back to Okta. So now back in Okta, I am going to go down here. And as you can see, here is uh, where I need to copy my unique ID, uh, which we call the entity ID. And then there's the service URL. Uh, here, Okta kind of separates it out into Jira and Confluence, but you can paste the same thing for both. And hit save. And that's it. That's SAML. After a little bit of back and forth, your settings here are saved. And now any of your users that you have synchronized through um, Okta, which includes the users you've synchronized through Skim, should be able to log into Atlassian Cloud with enforced SAML single sign-on from Okta. Now, if you don't have an identity provider today, you can still apply security features through Access. So if we want to apply security features, you'll go to authentication policies here. You can add multiple policies, of course, but we're going to go into our default policy for all users right now. Mm. And within here, excuse me, you can use um, enforce single sign-on for SAML. But if not, your other options are still available. You can require two-factor authentication. You can set password policy um, for how strong your passwords should be, as well as their expiry date. And you can set uh, idle session duration timeouts so that your users' accounts are automatically logged out after a set period of time of idling. Uh, as you can see, there's a whole suite of uh, security features you can set up and enforce for your organization's managed accounts. We understand organizations have different teams or applications that deal with varying levels of data sensitivity. And that is why with Access, we provide you the ability to set multiple authentication policies to allow for the right level of security for each. For example, maybe the marketing team who regularly accesses Confluence and Jira would need single sign-on, whereas the engineering team is constantly accessing Bitbucket, which might have more sensitive information and would actually need a single sign-on and enforce 2SV. You can also set up a test single sign-on policy with a few users to make sure you've configured SAML's single sign-on settings correctly before rolling it out to the entire organization. Um, and before Jonathan walks us through how uh, this is set up and how you can set up multiple authentication policies, a quick poll. How many different authentication policies do you think your organization needs? So we're back to our authentication policies interface. And say you want to set different levels of authentication for different users. So here I've got my all users policy. And right now we're requiring two-step verification and uh, password strength. 
But let's say I have some users I want uh, to have more sensitive security settings applied to. So now I'm going to go to add policy and let's say uh, special users. So now I can uh, go to this group and add some members. So let's add just a few random people. And we'll add these members to the group for you. Now these users, I think, are special and they access really, really sensitive data like our super, super secret next product. So I'm going to enforce single sign-on because I don't want anyone leaking that to the media. I'm also going to set their idle session duration to as short as possible um, so that these users can't just leave their computer screen on for someone to spy on them. So now those policies will apply. And now in auth policies, you've got uh, applies to all users, which is your default policy, and you've got special users. This is an eventual consistency thing, so expect these memberships to be updated within the next couple of minutes. If you want, you can add more. Really as many as your organization needs, as simple as that. Now we move into some data-driven reporting available to you through Access. With Organization Insights, you can better track user adoption of Elastian Cloud products and evaluate user security to help inform decisions on what you want to do next. For, you, for example, if you see that there's a lower user adoption than anticipated for a product, you can work with that specific team to see if you can increase adoption or optimize that ROI of that product and get rid of it. And along with Organization Insights, we also have an organization audit log available to view a comprehensive log of admin activity. This can help with proactive monitoring of suspicious activity behavior by other admins or retroactive investigation to identify the root cause of an incident that may have occurred. While we're in the security tab, you'll notice that this is where the insights and audit log that Sandy talked about live. So we're gonna go here to insights and take a look at that. Here's your organization insights page. Uh, we've got various charts for you, like active users sorted by products. You can filter um, by which products specifically, as well as select the time bounds that you want to see. Uh, hopefully, your org has a chart that looks a little better than this one, but this is a test instance, and as such, uh, not that many people log in, and you've got a pretty spiky graph here. You can also see active users by product broken out here and export those lists of users uh, if you want to check out your product usage. We've also got coverage charts for security policies like 2SB down here. Uh, feel free to give feedback if you want. We're always looking to identify what might be more useful things to add to our insights chart. So from here, we're going to go to the organization audit log. So this is an audit log that covers all admin activity in Atlassian Cloud, as well as user identity activity. So what that means is all these things I've been showing you in the demo, you can see over here. Um, I've been adding people to auth policies. I've been changing what those auth policies do. Uh, I've been setting up SAML. I've been syncing through Skim. Uh, all the sorts of things an admin might do. So this you can use to trace uh, security incidents or just you know, find out who moved my cheese. It also includes things like user login and logout and other identity and profile related events for security purposes. Just to note, if you're looking for the Jira and Confluence audit logs, you'll have to go into Jira and Confluence. Those don't live here. We're always adding more events to this log over time uh, to get wider and wider coverage. So uh, it's something where we're delivering continuous improvement. You can also access this data via the Organization REST API if you want. Uh, this can help automate ingestion as well as uh, provide you the ability to write tools if you like to scan over the audit logs uh, and make any kind of transformations or storage uh, or other custom sort of monitoring tools that you like. 
For more robust audit logs where you can leverage the API Jonathan just mentioned, use access to connect Elastian to or connect Elastian Cloud Activity to your Cloud Access Security Broker, also known as a CASB. This way you can get a more holistic view of your entire organization's cloud software activity beyond just Elastian Cloud Activity. Keep updated on Shadow IT Elastian Cloud products with automatic product discovery. So with this um, experience, you receive an email notification of shadow IT products and gain visibility into cloud products that are created by the managed users without the org admin's knowledge. You can also review each shadow IT product and reach out to those users to remediate the concern, whether that's removing the product or creating a specific one for that user to accommodate for it. So just a quick live-ish demo of our shadow IT features. So Sandy mentioned that you're going to get an email digest that lets you know what sort of instances your users or people in your organization might have been setting up without your knowledge. That is this right here. Uh, please ignore my massive failure to get to inbox zero. Uh, and we're going to go and see what this you know, looks like. So as you can see, there's 30 product instances managed outside my organization, which is an awful lot. I'm going to have to go have a stern talking to with the team later. In admin, what that looks like is this screen, the discovered product screen. I can just click back and forth if you want to see that this is in fact live. Um, so this is our discovered product screen. And you can see here are the 30 products that the email came uh, and told me about. It looks like it's all Confluence. So we have some very enthusiastic, oh, never mind, there's some Jira, but mostly Confluence. So we have some very enthusiastic uh, Confluence users here in the organization. And so what you can do here is uh, export these to a CSV so you can track down the responsible parties later if you want. Uh, you can also enable or disable an ongoing daily email digest. Um, so like when these users create new products, you'll get told whether or not someone's uh, created a new Elastian instance in your organization. Similar to how users can create products on their own, users can also create and use their own API tokens with Elastian Cloud products. This makes it difficult for admins to manage if users generate APIs that are old and forgotten about, increasing vulnerability of your organization. Within Access, admins can manage API tokens created by each user and can revoke use of API tokens if necessary. So let's go take a look at uh, wrangling together some of those leaky API tokens that our users might have created. I'm going to go to directory here, which shows us our managed accounts. And I happen to know that uh, Winston over here has an API token that he shouldn't. So this token was created way back in uh, 2020, which is obviously forever ago now. Uh, and because that's a terrible, dangerous threat. He might be leaking all sorts of sensitive JIRA data through that API that I don't want leaking out of the org. I can just go and click revoke right there. Uh, I'm not actually going to do that right now because Winston will actually be probably not very happy with me if I do, but that option is there for you if you want. So any of your users' accounts here in the managed account screen, you will be able to see the list of all their API tokens that they have generated when they last accessed it and uh, the ability to revoke them. And that's a wrap. Jonathan and I went through how to set up access and get the most out of each feature. We provided some resources on the side if you'd like to follow detailed documentation on how to set up access for success for your organization. That's it. Thank you for being with us. Let us know in a quick poll if you found this helpful. And until next time, cheers. <laughs>